Welcome, in this Gibbs Cam video, we're going to show you how to use grooving tools properly. You can see I have a part here that has OD grooving, some wide grooves, some narrow grooves with some radiuses on there, an ID groove with some radiuses, as well as a taper and radiuses on the ID. If I turn on the tools, you can see I just have a uh, turning tool to turn the OD and a drill to drill the ID and then some grooving tools a quarter inch for the OD and a quarter inch for the ID. Now normally on the document control here is my stock size here and normally I don't uh, use auto clearance reason being I like to use can cycles on my machine and auto clearance usually does not give you can cycles so normally I turn this off. Now if we look at our grooving tools, this is just a standard uh, quarter inch grooving tool. If you need to customize it, you can always click on other and fill in the blanks there. But we're just using a standard quarter inch um, grooving tool for, of course, the OD and same thing for the ID there. Now the first thing we want to do is, uh, of course, I'm just going to... Uh, uh, take one cut across the top there just to cut it to size because our material is three and a quarter. So our first cut's going to be just a uh, using the 80 degree diamond, just going across the top there. Now on this um, process here, if you check this back and I click on redo, for instance, you will see that the tool wants to dive down in there a little bit. Of course, Gibbs stays uh, two degrees away from any surface uh, based on the angle of the cutter here which is a degree diamond but we don't want it to go down in the grooves anyway so best thing to do is just turn this off and we'll redo that you can see it just stays on the top there and the same thing for the finish tool there uncheck that and it's not going to go into the groove so that uh, finishes the OD uh, and that except for the grooves. Now we want to start grooving this. Now there's a number of ways you can uh, groove this. Let's bring up our grooving process here. And normally when I'm doing grooving, I combine the processes together, both the roughing and the finish. Now you can use the same tool for rough and finish, which is normally what most people do, or you can choose a separate tool to finish. But on the roughing command, normally you have turn. So usually when you're doing roughing, it, uh, the standard process that comes up is turn, but we want to do plunge. And we want to do an OD plunge. So normally this is um, uh, three and a quarter on the material. And the if I dimension this, you can see that is three inch there. So we'll hide the dimensions there. So let's bring this back up. So I'm going to wrap it to 3.1. We're doing an OD. I'm doing a plunge. And normally this puts in negative 90 already if you're doing an OD type plunging. So normally you don't need to change this here. Now you can, depending on the cut width, you can either do an exact amount or calculate. I usually choose calculate. And I have 200 thou max step over on here because our grooving tool is a quarter inch wide we have a 13 thou radius so that means the flat is going to be 224 so i don't want to go past 224 we'll have little ridges radiuses in the bottom there so i'm going to say maximum cut width is 200 thou now you can choose either to go center out cuts or multi-pass on there i usually start out the center so what center cuts means is that it's going to always start in the center of a groove and then go back and forth on each side this side this side and cut that out now on the plunge type uh, normally grooving has a good chance of uh, curling chips a lot and making stringy chips depending on the material so if you'd like you can go peck full out peck retract so this will help you break the chips if you want but I'm just going to choose plunge right now and the first feed is going to be 50% of the standard feed so you can change that to what you would like, but the first feed is going to be 50% uh, is usually what I just leave the default there. And of course, turn on your feeds and speeds, whatever you'd like there. But over on here on the grooving, I always choose material only. So what that's going to do is look at the material was left from prior.
processes, prior operations, in this case the turning tools. And I want to uh, wrap it within 30 thou of the material. And I don't do a side start extension, corner brakes. So you can choose either to leave finished stock, in this case 10 thou, which will leave a finished stock on all the surfaces, or you can put XR stock, which will leave uh, material on the X and a different Z stock, uh, which will leave material on both sides of the groove. And of course I have all these check boxes here, which is fine. Then on the next process, I have an OD again, and uh, same rapid point, material only 30 thou. But on here you want to do no drag. Now what no drag means is normally when you're grooving, the tool will come down and take a finish pass and then go across the bottom and then it'll drag up the top there and take to take that 10 thou out. Well usually that leaves a very bad finish and uh, usually leaves to uh, high squealing of the tool vibrating and uh, not a very good finish. So what drag, no drag will do is it'll force the tool always down inside in the grooves on OD. Same with the ID, it works the same way there. And again, and again I have my material only at 30 thou and we'll change this to three, about the same thing, uh, three thou is a good place to start usually on whatever uh, material you're using but that's that's kind of a good place to start here so with that you can actually click on anywhere here you don't have to get the markers perfectly on here you can just click on here i'm just gonna drag it out to here and i'm going to do the control shift somewhere on this line here doesn't really matter because we're using material only so gibbs knows that the prior tools cut this surface at the top the same on all of them so there's no material left on these surfaces here the only material left is uh, beginning of these radiuses and inside the grooves there so if we do that that'll have the OD done so if we run the rendering you can see what we've done so far so turn on the rendering click play there's our rough there's our finish so Gibbs knows the only material left is inside the grooves. Now you can see we're starting in the center of each groove and going back and forth. Now we're taking the same tool and finishing and you'll notice that it's going to always push the tool and not drag the tool up where there was material left. So push there, push there, finish the bottom, push there, push there, finish the bottom. Same thing with the other side, push the bottom. And now our OD is finished on there. Now let's concentrate on the ID here. So the next process I'm going to do is number five, and that's just going to be a drill. And we're just going to drill it right to size instead of bore, bore it. And uh, of course, the next two operations. Again, we're doing um, a roughing and a finish with tool number seven, which is our ID groover. And I'm going to click on front ID. And of course, this is your clearance of the uh, inside diameter. The inside diameter is inch and a half. And I want to uh, go up to about 1.4 as clearance there. And again, I'm going to calculate 200 thou uh, step over on each, you know, on each way. And I'm going to start in the center out again. Material only 30 thou. Again, I'm going to leave stock 10 thou. And for the finish pass, same thing, front ID, everything there is good. And I'm going to click on no drag again. And material only, and adjust our feeds and speeds. Here we'll just put that down to three, good place to start. And then we'll just redo all those operations there. Now if we go to uh, render that, let's turn this on so you can see the inside of that and we'll slow it down of course here's the drill and then again we're grooving starting in the middle of each groove even if this has a taper on that it will still do that now if you want to break up the edges a little more on here you would adjust the step over a little bit let's do that on the fly here so let's open this up and let's say Calculate the maximum, we'll say 0.1. We'll just click on redo. And let's render this again. 
up to that point. Now we'll slow it down. Our drill, you can see a little less step over. It gets those tapers a little bit better so we don't have such a huge step when we're finishing. And of course now we're going to finish. Now if you want to you could just do these grooves uh, at a wider step over if they don't have uh, very big radiuses in the bottom and then do this as a separate operation with uh, less step over so you don't have such a big step when you finish. And now as we're finishing you can see cleans up the bottom, cleans up the bottom this way, this way, and now you can see now we have a finished part there with the grooves. So as I mentioned at the beginning, normally I don't use auto clearance because I like can cycles, but this will not be, usually the uh, grooving cycles are not can cycles because Gibbs is looking at the material only that was left over. So it's a more efficient tool path than just uh, say a straight grooving cycle. But on the OD turning, whether you have uh, straight like this or uh, contours, radiuses and that, I like to use can cycles. So that's where uh, having auto clearance off on the uh, main document page, that'll give you can cycles and of course uh, cut more efficiently and you can change that out on the machine if you want to go deeper cuts or not on a can cycle you can just change one number out on your machine and do that very quickly so this is a quick rundown on how to use grooving tools efficiently and thank you for watching